Hello and welcome to Kobe's Classroom, the visual guide for the first section of another Mount Rockon. This guide was created using the strats currently being used on the Materia Party Finder. This is the setup that we'll be using for this guide. We move into the first room with the first set of ads. The first and most important one to talk about is the blue guy at the back, the Shishu Yuki. If you aggro this guy before all the other adds are dead, he will one-shot you with auto attacks. When we begin the pool, he'll start walking around the arena in a figure eight pattern, like this. Once he gets to the center, after each loop, he'll cast left or right swipe, cleaving that side of the arena. We begin by pulling the yellow Shishu Raikou and its adds into the southeast corner. We will begin casting Disciples of Levin, a medium point blank AoE. The smaller adds will sometimes cast small conal AoEs, so just watch out for their casts too. Next, he will begin casting Barreling Smash, marking one player. When the cast ends, this player will be hit by a line AoE, and their HP will be set to 1. We have this player move to the side to take this hit by themselves. Immediately after, the Riker will cast Hail, a raid-wide AoE, so make sure to heal the marked player. We begin moving the Raikou to avoid the path of the Yuki and he'll begin casting Master of Eleven, a donor AoE, so we bring the adds to the southwest corner and they should be close to dead around this time. Next, we can pull the Shishu Fuko down to the southwest, waiting for the Yuki to reach the middle. The Fuko will start casting Scythe Tail, which is a medium sized point blank AoE. We want to be positioned at the middle in the south to avoid the Yuki's cleave. When he's cleaving, he will always be looking south. He starts casting left swipe, so we move west. The Fuko will cast Twister, which gives one player a stack marker. He'll emit through this. We drag the Fuko to the southeast to avoid the path of the Yuki. Crosswind is a knockback. Be careful not to be knocked towards the Yuki. The smaller adds can cast small AoEs on a player's location, so just be watching out for those too. We move to adjust for the Yuki's path again, and kill the Fuko when possible. Now we can pull the Yuki in and kill it. It will occasionally do the left or right swipe, just avoid it as normal. Now we can move on to the first boss, Shishio. For this boss, we need boss relative roll pairs and a boss relative spread position. The fight begins with Shishio casting Enkyo a raid-wide AoE that also puts up death walls around the arena. Heal and mitigate through this. Next, we have Stormcloud Summons. This will be cast multiple times throughout the fight. The arena shrinks into a circle shape and lots of black clouds will spawn. Shishio will cast Smoke Eater, where he will suck up clouds one, two, or three times. When a cloud gets hit with an attack, it will explode with an AoE. The safe spot to dodge this changes based on the number of times he eats the clouds. First, we have the three suck pattern. Shishio starts casting Rakujo Revel, which will show three line AoEs using the marks on the ground. The safe spot for this pattern can be found in two ways, whichever is easiest for you. Either opposite the cloud not in one of the lines, or in the spot next to the cloud in the second line. We dodge into this spot, then follow the exploding clouds around. Next, we have the two suck pattern. One side of the first line will have two clouds. The other side will have one cloud. We stand on the one cloud side opposite it and follow the explosions around. Finally, the one suck pattern. On each side of the line there will be one cloud, we just stand on the opposite side and follow it around. After Stormcloud summons we have Split and Cry, a line AoE tank buster which is immediately followed up with Slither, a backwards conal AoE. 
Do not be standing behind him. This is followed by Noble Pursuit. Four lines of rings will spawn around the arena. When Shishio charges through these rings, they will burst with the line AoEs on each side. The safe spot for this is very easy to find. We stand in the gap of the first rings and look south to find the gap in the second set of rings. The safe spot is in line with both of these with micro adjustments for the third and fourth set. This is followed with an, with an MQ cast. Next, we move on to the next major mechanic. Shishio casts a natural whale, which will give out several debuffs. All players will receive a spread debuff, and two players will receive a stack debuff. Check the timer to see which one will go off. Haunting Cry will spawn four Yuki adds around the arena, which will cast their left or right swipe. The swipes will result in a safe spot which is located between the two ads looking outwards or not at the boss. In this case, a stack is first, so we move into our boss relative stack position. Every time we see these mechanics in this dungeon, we will have the healer and melee DPS adjust if needed. The swipes and stacks go off, and then we'll move into the safe spot created by the second set of ads into our spread positions. Now we have another Storm Cloud Summons. These are spawned in a ring around the arena. Lightning Bolt will drop a small AoE on each of these, and they will start shooting at lines. I'm not going to show the whole thing here, but they'll just keep shooting at lines at players until the mechanic is over. It can be a bit chaotic, but just keep dodging and it'll be fine. Afterwards we get another Unnatural Whale, followed by either Vortex of the Thunder Eye, or Eye of the Thunder Vortex. The important thing to notice is that Eye means a point blank AoE and Vortex means a donut. They will go off in the order in the cast name and we just do our spreads or stacks in, at the same time. We get another Enkyo and then a second Haunting Cry, the last real mechanic of the fight. This will spawn four ghost adds, one tethered to each player. When these ghosts move, they will drop medium circular AoEs. We drag the tethers opposite to our ghost and they begin to move. When our ghost reaches the middle, we start to rotate clockwise. Two players will now be marked and two towers will spawn. At the end of the Vengeful Souls cast, the marked players will explode with large AoEs and the towers will go off. The goal is to have the unmarked players in the towers, and the marked players out on the wall. Next, we get Thunder Vortex, which is just a donut, followed by a Split and Cry into Slither combo. We get another Stormcloud Summons, which is just the exact same as the first one. And then yet another storm cloud summons. This is the this is the chaotic one again, except it can suck multiple times so the lines can be larger. We get another un unnatural whale into Eye of the Thunder Vortex. Uh, Shashia will begin to enrage now with an Enkyo cast. If you manage to clear, congratulations. If not, you'll get it next time. Guides for boss 2 and boss 3 will be out in the next few days. If you like this video, you can leave a like, comment, or subscribe. You can also find me on Twitch and Twitter at BigKobeLive, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.